Welcome. In this segment, we'll be discussing WorldCat, the largest library catalog in the world. Let's talk about what's in WorldCat and what it can do for you. Currently, WorldCat is a searchable library catalog that has the holdings of over 10,000 libraries in the world. And as of September 2012, it had about 1.5 billion items. The items that are in WorldCat vary from format to topic. So when you go into WorldCat, you can find everything from journals to historical materials to maps and videos and, of course, books. And because it's public and academic and special libraries, you can find all kinds of topics and formats. So these are just some reviews of things that you can find in WorldCat. There's lots more than just on these lists. When you first get into WorldCat, you'll see the basic search screen. And you can go in and you can use that option, or there's an advanced search option where you can put on lots of limits. But not to worry, if you do the basic search, you can actually go in afterwards and put on some limits. There's a lot of really neat features about WorldCat. After you search WorldCat, you can put some limits on. You can tell who in the world has the item that you're looking at. And you can actually go to the individual library cat catalogs for those items that you found. A really neat feature of WorldCat is when you're actually looking at an item and you want to save that for a citation, for a bibliography, for a research paper, you can use the Cite option and it will actually reformat your citation for you. And then you can copy and paste that into your bibliography. Or you could create a free WorldCat account and when you cite your items, you can save them within WorldCat. So you can have bibliographies going in WorldCat of all your research. So as you're doing your research, you open up WorldCat, you open up your account, and you just keep adding to your bibliography until you're ready to print it off for your research paper. There's another neat feature of WorldCat. There's reviews of items. And you can write reviews, and you can read other people's reviews. You can also create lists of items. So if you have um, just a popular list that you're doing, maybe not a formal bibliography, you can do that. You can see the popular libraries that are being searched. You can tag items with keywords. So you can actually put your own keywords into WorldCat. And then you can see what other people are doing for tags. You can also browse WorldCat by genre. Remember, it has 10,000 plus libraries over 1.5 billion items. So that's a lot to browse. So you could go in and you can just browse by a particular subject or genre, maybe historical information, maybe a particular subject that I'm looking for. Let's go ahead and go into the live WorldCat here so I can show you all these neat features. To get to WorldCat, it's worldcat.org. This is a free version of WorldCat. You can use it anywhere you have the internet. And when you go into WorldCat, this is what you're going to see. There's your basic search at the top. On the right-hand side, there's the option where you can create your free account where you can do some more advanced things, again, like creating bibliographies and putting tags on items. They have a mobile app available. And further down are the other options I talked about, browsing by popular libraries, tags, and reviews. But let's stay up at the top here, and we'll do a search so I can show you how powerful WorldCat is. I go into worldcat.org. All I need to do is type in my topic. I can do it from the basic search or the advanced search. I'm going to have it search everything all at once. I click on Search Everything. After WorldCat does my search, and again, it's pulling information from over 10,000 libraries around the world, I can put some limits on. So on the left-hand side, you'll see lots of limits where I can limit by book, journal article, maybe by a particular date. Lots of different limits are available. I can also resort my limits or my uh, results. So maybe I want to look at the newest things first instead of having it sorted by relevance. So let's go ahead and change it to newest first just to show you how that resorts. Automatically it resorted for me. And maybe I'm just looking for books. Again, I did a basic search, but I can still use all of those advanced search options after I did my basic search. Let's go into an item so I can show you some of the other neat features of WorldCat. Once you have your information up about your item that you're interested in, you'll see at the top a lot of more options come up here. So I could cite it. You do not need an account to do this. I could click Cite and it will reformat for me. If I wanted to save it to a bibliography in WorldCat, I need a free account. 
And there's the other options I mentioned, adding to lists, tags, and reviews. Let's just scroll down so I can show you what happens in WorldCat. In WorldCat, I can type in my zip code of wherever I'm located, and it will tell me who in the world owns that item. And it will start out from the closest library to that zip code and move outward. So if it's a library that's close by, I can actually go and visit it. And it actually tells you how far away it is by miles. It will give you maps and links to the library websites. If for some reason the item I want isn't close enough for me to get, I can do what's called interlibrary loan through my library. So whether I'm at a public library or at an academic library, I could do an interlibrary loan for that item. WorldCat is the tool that you use to find all of these great publications that are available worldwide. When you're searching your local library catalog, you're just searching that narrow um, amount of items that's at your public or academic library. But when you search WorldCat, you're searching the entire world for your topic. So it can really broaden your research. So take some time to visit worldcat.org. I think you'll be happy with your search results. That's all for now. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.